Kenny, you ready for game time? Join me, Sal from Behind New York Basketball, as I announce play-by-play. -play. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe, because now we're about to go live. Entering the pregame, we now present Sal from Behind New York Basketball. And here we go. We're back live once again. First round of the NCAA tournament, we get the number 11 seed, the Oregon Ducks, taking on the number 6 seed, the South Carolina Gamecocks, as we welcome you guys back in once again. Only 11.6% of perfect brackets remain after the conclusion of three games. Oregon comes in as the favorite on the line, even though they are the weaker seed in this matchup. A 2.5 point favorite for Oregon over under at 135.5 for this game. If you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell as well. So we get a lot of people joining back in. Vegas, his bracket's still perfect. Bryce, uh, good pupper, welcome back in once again. Braden, welcome back in, man. Oregon, the Pac-12 Tournament Champions, winners of four straight games in a row, 23-11, 12-8 in Pac-12 Conference play. They got here by winning their conference tournaments as it wouldn't have been a good enough resume to get them inside the at-large picture. And they know how to win first round at tournament games. Seven straight NCAA Tournament first round wins under head coach Dana Altman for Oregon. They got here by uh, winning close games as well. Four straight wins in a row by single digits. Three in a row in the Pac-12 Tournament Championship in three days to be a bid stealer. Winning by two against UCLA, 68-66. to They won against Arizona, completed a 14-point point comeback in the second half to beat Arizona, 67-59. to And then won against Colorado, 75-68. to in the Pac-12 tournament title. And this team has just been resilient this year, overcoming a lot of injuries that they have had. They've had 10 different starting lineups. Players have been out constantly due to injuries. A couple key players got injured back in the, in the non-conference late early on in November. And they were down to only eight scholarship players on the roster and able to uh, find their way and win the Pac-12 championship last Saturday. Lucas in the street, welcome in, man. South Carolina... What a story they've been this year. Record of 26-7, and 13-5 and in the SEC. The number three place team in the SEC in the regular season. Head coach Lamont Paris, second season at South Carolina. Major improvements. 11-21, and 4-14 last year in the SEC. Up to this year, taking his team to a 26-7 and record. And an NCAA tournament appearance for South Carolina. They were projected the last place team in the SEC preseason poll back in October. They got some solid wins. They blew out Kentucky back in early January, one on the road against Tennessee. But they've also got destroyed in a couple of games, three of their losses by 25 points or greater this season, lost against Auburn twice, just not looking like a matchup for them. They got beat the first time by 40 against Oregon, or uh, against Auburn lost in the SEC tournament against Auburn, 86 to 55, and then they also got crushed back in early December uh, or uh, early January on the road to Alabama, 74 to 47. So it's not a team that's really just analytically popped eyes for this season for South Carolina. They're actually the luckiest team on Ken Palm for the Ken Palm rating, and they do struggle to score the ball. They Rank around the 230s in the nation in scoring this season, averaging only 72 points per game. They don't really have a player that can take over the game for scoring for South Carolina. Uh, they struggle with a lot of efficiency for them, but they are a defensive-minded team, top 50 and fewest points allowed. In Oregon, they are an offensive first-type team, 75 points per game, top 120 in the nation this season. A uh, couple really good guards in this team, and they actually have a former South Carolina transfer, Jermaine Kuznard from South Carolina, put it up 15 points per game at Oregon, a second-team all-conference Pac-12 selection 
this season. So we, we will tip this off in around eight and a half minutes from now. So we got a timer uh, just said that this game will tip off in around eight and a half minutes. Jeffrey, Mario, welcome back in. Mikey in the stream. Adrian, welcome back in once again. If you guys are new in the channel, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring that notification bell as well as we are back. So we're going to tip off in around eight minutes from now, so a little bit past the scheduled time since uh, it was uh, Creighton against Akron, which finished up the game before this. We'll go over what's happened today. First game today, Michigan State beat Mississippi State 69-51 to 51 the final. Duquesne pulled off the upset over BYU 71-67 to 67, as uh, Vegas called that one. And he was correct. His bracket's perfect. 71-67 Duquesne. And then Creighton won over Akron 77-60. to 60. So not really like any giant killer upsets. We saw an 11 over a 6, which within the last 10 years, an 11 seed has won more than the 6 seed actually in the bracket. We got another one here with an 11 versus 6. And uh, Arizona taking that game into good hands. Arizona crushing Long Beach State 82 to 60. Long Beach State hung in with them early on, but they missed 15 straight shots in a row. And then Arizona, after that, pulled away. Uh, North Carolina leading Wagner by 13 with under 17 minutes left to go, 45 to 32. And Moorhead State. Uh, leading right now against Illinois. I was catching some of that game early on. And right now it's Moorhead State 27, Illinois 23. With seven minutes left to go before halftime. And honestly, I, I said I wouldn't be shocked if that's the upset right there. Considering Big Ten champion teams. Uh, the teams in the Big Ten championship have struggled in the bracket in the first round. Um, after the pandemic. With all the losses that they've suffered, 2021 Ohio State got eliminated by Oral Roberts. Um, Illinois got eliminated in the second round in 2021 against Loyola Chicago. Fast forward a year later, Keegan Murray in Iowa won the Big Ten Championship in 2022, lost against Richmond in the first round. And then Purdue went to the Sweet 16 that year, lost against the 15 seed St. Peter's. And then last year it was... Once again, Purdue lost against FDU, and then Penn State was in the championship game last year for the Big Ten Tournament Championship. They lost in round two against Texas. Yeah, Moorhead State, some of their statistics are similar to St. Peter's and Princeton from two giant killers that they've had. So they rank top 10 in interior defense, top 10 in fewest points allowed. And uh, Moorhead State clinging to a one-point lead right now against a super explosive Illinois offense. 27-26 with six minutes left. Yeah, Moorhead State beat Louisville like a decade ago. This game's taking place out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. First round matchup, Oregon against South Carolina. Oregon under head coach Dana Altman with a knack to winning NCAA tournament games. He always just seems to get the best out of his players in the month of March for Dana Altman. Three straight wins in the Pac-12 tournament in three straight days to take home the Pac-12 tournament crown. The final season as the Pac-12 as well, Enfali Dante. They get a big three. The big man, Enfali Dante, is healthy. He's averaging 16 points, nine rebounds per game this season. Jermaine Kuznard for Oregon. He's a former South Carolina transfer, averaging 15 points per game. And then Jackson Shellstead, a first year, averaging 13 points per game. Born in the same town as Peyton Pritchard, Westland, Oregon for Jackson Shellstead, a top 25 recruit for him. And this is a very good offense for Oregon. They got a lot of good shot making abilities for the Stuck squad going up against a very physical, tough defensive minded team on their head coach Lamont Paris in South Carolina. South Carolina led by Michi Johnson putting up 13.8 points per game. Second team all conference selection in the SEC. So here we go about to tip off. If you're New in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and we're going to tip off here in a couple moments from now. I believe in three minutes we will tip this thing off. Andrew in the stream, welcome in. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, so this game is about to start three minutes from now. We're going to tip this one off. Yeah, I was uh, I was very tempted to Vegas. Honestly, I think it can go either way between Moorhead State and Illinois. Based on the recent history that uh, Big Ten has had struggling quick turnaround for the Big Ten, too, because they have the final NCAA 
champion or uh, they get the final conference championship game for the Big Ten on Sunday, right before Selection Sunday. And uh, here, here's a good thing. Good thing for Moorhead State, they get the most rest out of anybody. Their conference championship game was on the Saturday. They they get an additional eight days of rest compared to Illinois because they have their conference championship on the Saturday night before conference tournaments tournament start in the major conferences for them. The OVC for Ohio Valley is always the first one to complete their conference championship. Hockey from home, welcome back in. Thanks for joining in. Going to be a fun one for this matchup. If you guys are doing a stream, make sure to keep on smashing that thumbs up. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Oh, sorry to hear that, Bryce. Well, hopefully Tennessee is able to come through for you. We'll see if there is a 15 versus 2 upset. It's been one the previous two years. First one couldn't come through today. Vernon, welcome back in, man. Waiting to tip off. We're going to tip off in about a minute or two from now. Getting ready for this one. Arizona out in cruise control. Leading Long Beach State 82-63. to North Carolina looking good up over Wagner. Closer than I expected though. It's now 47-33. to North Carolina and Illinois is uh, starting to get into a groove right now. Illinois is taking a lead over Moorhead State 34-29. to With under 5 minutes left to go before halftime. So that's the game ahead of us right now that's going down tipping off in around 20 minutes from now too will be nevada against dayton 10 versus 7 matchup that's the last matchup of the 4 p.m time slate and then there's a break 6 50 p.m they'll have more games tipping off Colorado state taking on texas another 10 versus 7 matchup oakland against kentucky at 7 10 14 v3 matchup i'll be back after this one from mcnee state taking on gonzaga 12 versus 5 at 7 25 but about to get ready for this game here. Oregon with their green jerseys, yellow numbers, yellow leathers for the Oregon Ducks. What a story they have been this season. Only eight scholarship players available. Been hobbled, lost a lot of key players early on in the non-conference slate. But here they are getting the best from head coach Dana Altman. Getting his team back to the NCAA tournament. South Carolina, what a story they have been as well. Predicted to finish at last place in the SEC preseason poll back in October. Major step up in the right direction in year two under head coach Lamont Paris. 11-21 and last season for their overall record. This year, record of 26-7. and That ties a school record for the Gamecocks. White jerseys for South Carolina, maroon numbers, maroon leather. Starting five looks like this for Oregon. Jackson Shellstead, Jermaine Kuznard, Jadrian Tracy, Kwame Evans Jr., and Folly Dante. The starting five for Oregon. Talon Cooper, Michi Johnson, Zachary Davis, BJ Mack, Colin Murray Boyles. The starting five for South Carolina. Dana Altman, 14 and 7 record in the NCAA tournament. 14th year as head coach for Oregon. Going up against Lamont Paris, year two. For South Carolina, he has never won an NCAA tournament game ever. Came one point shy two years ago as the head coach for Tennessee Chattanooga in a one-point loss against Illinois. Here we go. We are underway for the opening tip. South Carolina right to left on the floor as they have it first here with possession number one. B.J. Mack, top of the key, hands it off to Michi Johnson. Slides it out to the left wing over the back. Bounce pass down to the low block here for South Carolina. They bring along a double team around the perimeter. Outside it goes to Cooper. Cooper leads the team averaging above four assists per game. South Carolina deep in the shot clock. Six in the shot clock here, top of the key. As they dribble up to the elbow for SC. South Carolina down low underneath. Got blocked by... Oregon, Kwame Evan Jr. comes up with a block, and here they go with Oregon. No look pass right corner. Had an open opportunity in a three. Instead, it's going to be Shellstead. Takes it. He makes it. Three zip for the Ducks. Jackson Shellstead out of Westland, Oregon, where Peyton Pritchard grew up and was raised as well. Top 25 freshman recruit, a five-star, put it up 13 points per game this season. The backcourt, solid 
aspect this year for Oregon. Jermaine Kuznard, a former South Carolina transfer, leads the team in scoring this season in the backcourt. Missed shot, no good off the glass by South Carolina. Off the mark by Zachary Davis. Rebound control by Oregon. Shellstead running the point, top of the key. As we are minute 15 to action so far. Moves it out to the right wing perimeter. Jermaine Kuznard, his pass, couldn't convert. It's a turnover. Look at the set it down low there to Kwame Evans Jr. First turnover today. Oh, that's awesome. Best of luck uh, headed out to Naples tomorrow for you, Andrew. That's awesome, man. South Carolina yet to convert so far. The struggle has been on the offensive side of the floor this season. Really struggling in the 200s in the nation and field goal shooting efficiency and three-point shooting efficiency per game this season. They are averaging only 72 points per game. Oregon's averaging over 75. Deflected pass inside a key. And it's a turnover committed by the Gamecocks. Oregon up the floor with it. Shellstead. Moves it out to the right wing, Kuznar. Back into the hands to Shellstead here for the Ducks. Bounce pass goes to Enfali Dante. Top of the key. He leads the team, averaging 16-8 per game this season. Hand off to Kuznar. 18 minutes left to go in the first. Kuznar, a former transfer from South Carolina before he came to Oregon. Kwame Evans Jr. Dribble drive down the lane inside to the rim. He scores. Up and in. Off the backboard for Kwame Evans Jr. Got a couple of key freshmen on this team here for Oregon. That's one of them. Six foot nine. His first year from Baltimore, Maryland. South Carolina stuck in the corner. And they stepped out of bounds. That's a turnover. Rough start here for South Carolina. Rough start for teams in the SEC. South Carolina, number one team on Ken Palm and luck rating for them this season. Analytics do not like them. Net rating of 51. Ken Palm rating, rating of 50 this season. Top of the key for Oregon. Up five zip in the first two and a half minutes. At the left wing, it's Jeremy and Kuznard. Kuznard going up one-on-one -on -one against Zachary Davis. Kuznard brings along a double team, gets it away, and that's going to be a turnover there. Charge to Kuznard down the far side of the floor, called in the travel. North Carolina starting to run away against Wagner, 54-36. to Arizona, final minute before they'll pick up the win over Long Beach State, 85-65. Illinois, five-point lead over Moorhead State right now, 36-31. Two turnovers for both of these teams so far. South Carolina... Their offense right now just mushed up, looking like Mississippi State from earlier this afternoon. Number 30, Colin Murray Boyles. Out to the corner, goes over to Talon Cooper. Cooper guarded at the left wing, working on Dante. Spin move down low as he's being pressured. Sends it off to the elbow. Jumper, deep two, they got one. B.J. Mack, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, scores the J. Three-point game right now. Perfect two for two for Oregon. They do have two total turnovers, though. Shellstead. Sends it on top. Evans Jr. back into the hands to Shellstead. Top of the key goes to Dante. Dante yet to score. Looking to change that so far. Hand off Shellstead. Laces up a three. Came off the rim short. The rebound controlled for the Gamecocks. Slow start here to both of these offenses so far. Michi Johnson Jr. Hand off around the perimeter. Off to Zachary Davis. Goes to Cooper at the wing. Outside. Here's a three. Taken by Max. Splashes it through. 5-zip individual run here by BJ Mack for the Gamecocks. What's good, Diamond McCrab? Welcome back in the stream, man. Max poured in 13.6 points per game this season. Oregon will go down low. Dante with position. Dante to the bucket, plus one. Coming up at a free to line. Scores the layup, gets fouled. Just so physical. Down low with Enfali Dante. Winner of this game will take on Creighton in the round of 32. Creighton picking up the win over Akron in the first game today. Taking place over in Pittsburgh. Dante with a free throw and no good. Rolled around the rim and out. Tipped over to South Carolina on the defensive rebound. Gamecocks with possession. Cooper. Sends it off to his right. So that's to James Cooper, number 12. To, uh, number 12 for Zachary Davis for South Carolina. Tough turnaround. A hook, no good. Missed off the mark. Off. It's a rebound. Kept alive, though, for the Gamecocks as they jack up a three. Cut it cover. And there's Dante who crashes the glass with a defensive rebound. Uh, I do not know. Oh, you're not asking me. I was going to say, yeah, it's spelled uh, wrong right there. As we have... The ball getting deflected out of bounds up the floor. We're under 16 minutes left to go in the first here, so we'll have the timeout taken. My clock was actually 
stuck for a brief moment. So we're down to 15.32. Left to go in the first tier as we take the first time out in the media break. All right, if you guys are new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Hit us up in the chat, by the way, who guys like to win this one here, Oregon or South Carolina. I cover basketball, play-by-play -play action here on the channel, play-by-play -play of college hoops, also NBA games as well. Oregon getting their offense rolling three for four from the floor. South Carolina limited to just two for five so far. And Oregon with a paint advantage, four zip points on the paint. And, and Folly Dante had that bucket down inside a low post. It was a great start for Oregon, too. They got up five to zero to begin this game. Uh, they do have three turnovers, though. So um, a couple of their starters are actually first year players. So a little bit of jitters to start off for Oregon. But nevertheless, they still get the lead right now for this team. And um, South Carolina. I, I feel like for them, they reached their ceiling for them this year for South Carolina. Like, an, an incredible s season for them. I think head coach Lamont Powers got the most out of, like, the group possible that he could very well get. Like, an amazing record for them. Tied for most wins in program history, 26-7 and seven this year. Just an incredible season for them. It, it, it kind of reminds me of Providence's year two years ago where... Um, Providence did make the Sweet 16 that year. Everybody kept on doubting Providence, though, because they had a couple like bad losses by like 30-plus that they took on their resume, but they were against good teams. They just didn't match up well against those teams. That was the year they had uh, eight seniors with Nate Watson on the team for PC. They got, got lucky, though, that year in 2022 because they got to face Richmond in the second round since uh, Richmond took out Iowa. North Carolina looking great right now, 58-42. UNC leading over Wagner, Illinois, up by four against Moorhead State, 39-35. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really good game here. Both of these teams made deep runs into their regional back in 2017. So seven years ago, both of these teams w made remarkable runs. South Carolina, I believe they were the seventh seed in that tournament from 2017. Uh, Oregon's actually the favorite on the line for this game. It was at two and a half points before tip-off. Back for the timeout right now. 11s keep on beating the sixes recently. Dante down low with... The block right there is South Carolina. Oh, they're going to call it goaltend. Yep, they're going to call it goaltend. So not clean on the block. So it was over the cylinder when Dante tried to clear it. So it's tied up at 7. 7-7. Seven, seven, Oregon has possession. Inside, Cario Oquendo, first time of the floor. Number five, Jermaine Kuznard has the top of the key. Kuznard dribbles up to the elbow. Kuznard tried to go in for a runner. Got slapped in the face there. No call by the referee. South Carolina able to come off the deflection as they go the length of the floor. Take it in for the layup. Nine to seven now. First scoring lead for South Carolina on a nine to two run. Talon Cooper able to get the layup on fast break transition. Kuznard off the roll down. Dante... Try to keep both feet in bounds. Couldn't off the pick and roll as he was out of bounds with it. That's a turnover. So after a great start for Oregon, it's come down a little bit. Starting to crash down lately. And they got to get their team reorganized, refocused here. Four turnovers by Oregon so far in the first five and a half minutes of action. That's not a good sign currently. South Carolina has the ball. Zachary Davis. Out to the corner, into the hands to Cooper. Cooper dribbles towards his left around the perimeter. Jacoby right sends that left wing to Davis on top. It goes over to Stute. 
Miles Stu at the elbow. Bounce pass down low. Josh Gray had to take it away. Turnover outlet pass ahead. Too tall for Shellstead. Got knocked down. No call with the referees right there. There was some contact on the outlet pass ahead. He got tripped up, but the referees let him play on. It's another Oregon turnover. That's now their fifth turnover in six minutes almost. Two-point lead for South Carolina. Quarter three, they bricked it. Off the back rim by Davis. Offensive rebound right back to Davis. Goes back door. He scores up and then off the backboard. 11-7 for the Gamecocks. Oregon with possession. Aquendo at the right wing. This is part of an 11-2 run by Oregon after Oregon led 5-zip. And away from the basketball here, we get a foul picked up, charged to South Carolina. Yeah, my weekend went well. I had um, two lacrosse games last weekend that I covered. Inbound here for Oregon. Tracy lost the handle. Another turnover by Oregon right now. South Carolina came out with a steal. They jack up a three. Came off rim short. Shellstead collects the defensive rebound. Up the floor for Shellstead. These guys are losing handles completely. Dribble drive inside. Dump off Dante. And that's good for the bucket there. Wow. They might have got away with one. But Oregon able to score the basket. So when Folly Dante down low score, this game is a combined 10 turnovers so far. South Carolina backdoor with a layup made by Jacoby Wright. What's good, Jay Ramirez in the stream? Welcome in. Yeah, Moorhead State only down by one right now at the half against Illinois, 39-38 currently. Warren, glad to have you back in, man. Oregon with possession, down by four. Kuznard. Top of the key. Bounce pass goes over to the elbow here for Oregon. Shot clock's down to eight. Kuznard backs his way. Shot clock to five. Kuznard low block. Puts it up. He scores. Up and in off the glass. Good for two. Two-point game right now. Back and forth. Back and forth between these two teams. This could be an excellent finish in this game today in the first round. 11 versus 6 matchup. South Carolina with the ball around the perimeter. Top of the key, Michi Johnson, dribble drive down the lane inside, dish out right wing, and Oregon gives a reach and foul. So we'll stop the clock now with 12-11. I took Oregon in uh, this one. Hanging in right now, they had the lead early on. I just like the track record of Dana Altman as head coach. Always just seems to get his guys ready every single tournament game. South Carolina, what was that? On the, on the inbound, they get called on a five-second violation. They didn't inbound it in time. So Lamont Paris, unhappy about the official. Cooper looking to inbound, waiting, waiting, waiting. And they clearly thought that it wasn't close to five. That they gave him instead like two or three seconds. Shellstead. At the wing, Shellstead draws a double team at the March Madness logo. Oregon with the ball. Shellstead moves it off to Aquendo. Aquendo crossover. Shellstead's open at the wing. Finds him. Shellstead takes the three from the logo. No good off the back rim. Rebound secured here for South Carolina. South Carolina's just going to muddy this up with their defense the whole game. Jacoby Wright sends it off to Mack. Mack powers his way down low. Mack inside the low post. Off the turnaround. Misfired. Glass too strong right there. Rebound control by Oregon. Up the floor with Oregon with Shellstead. Shellstead hands it off to Aquendo. Cario Aquendo sends it out top of the key. Mamadou Diawara now with the ball number 24 over to Shellstead at the wing. Brennan Rigsby. They move it off to the middle. Diawara into the hands to Rigsby. Shot clock's down to five. You got to get something off. They dribble, drive down the lane inside. Rigsby, kiss off the glass, scores. Wow, what a possession right there for Oregon as we get a tie game, 13 all. Brennan Rigsby off the bench, putting up above six points per game this season. That's a critical bucket to get his team right back into this thing. Michi Johnson, jumper deep two, gets blocked from the side by Rigsby. Here goes Oregon, chance to take the lead this possession. Shellstead. Hands it off to Aquendo. Aquendo, free throw circle. Hand off. Rigsby, top of the key. 
Ten and a half left to go right now in the first. Rigsby, kick out, quarter, three in the air, Quendo, no good. Bricked off the back heel, rebound secured by South Carolina. Joe in the stream, welcome in. Yeah, Illinois battling right there with Moorhead State. That's a great game in the first half. BJ Mack, hand off Jacoby White, right, right, drives right baseline. No good, missed off the glass, offense rebound right back to right. Here's a three. Missed by South Carolina by Mack. Loose ball. South Carolina gets it back off the 50-50 ball. A lot of contact down low and Miles Stute gets fouled. So two free throws here at the line for South Carolina. Man, this is a battle right now. South Carolina is more like a second chance physical type team. Uh, this Oregon squad relying heavily upon shot makers. And South Carolina with their defense... Really just trying to buddy up this game, and it goes to the advantage for South Carolina so far. 26 combined points. Midway to the first, it's 13 all. All right, so if you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring that notification bell to be notified for future live streams here on the channel. And This has been anybody's game so far, pretty much even. Seven points by BJ Mack for South Carolina. Gonna get other guys involved. Two points by three uh two points by three other players so far this game. And then for Oregon, it's been a little bit more of a balance, but nobody been able to take over so far. And Folly Dante with four. Dante was on the bench during that tad of a scoring run by Oregon. So that's a good sign to see there for the Ducks. Three by Shellstead to begin the game. Rigsby off the bench with two. Kuznard's got two. Evans Jr. has two for Oregon. It's been a nightmare with these turnovers so far. Um, seven turnovers by Oregon, four by South Carolina. And for Oregon, they're super lucky to be in this game because they've attempted six shots fewer than South Carolina right now. South Carolina is six for 16. Oregon is six for 10. They just can't get rebounds. 3-0 offensive glass in favor of South Carolina, plus these turnovers just been a nightmare for Oregon. Wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, uh, St. Saint Louis uh, fired its head coach last week. That's awesome that they're trying to get the Indiana State head coach. Yeah, um, I I probably would have put him as an eleven as well because that's where um, a lot of like the conference tournament teams were going to land. So I, I probably would have had them as an 11, honestly, too. Yeah, this is my first time hearing about it from uh, you, Joe. But it, it doesn't shock me. He's well-deserving for the job in St. Louis if he goes there because they do need a new head coach. They just fired their head coach last week. I got Oregon in uh, this one here, Mario. Welcome back in, man. I think it's going to be a close game either way. North Carolina looking solid. 73-50 to UNC over Wagner. And Illinois up at the half over Moorhead State. 39-38. Dayton versus Nevada. That game will tip off at 4.45 p.m. I think it's going to be close either way. Um, the South Carolina team reminds me so much of Providence from two years ago that everybody was just like against them and they kept on finding ways to win for South Carolina. But Oregon's got just such a good head coach when it comes down to March. Like Dana Altman's right up there with Tom Izzo in games in March. There was a goal 10 earlier on in this game. Off the fingertips of Enfali Dante. And they're showing that replay. That was very early on in this game that they had a goal 10. South Carolina will head to the free to line here. Shoot two with Miles Stute. First one's good. Kara, welcome in. Thanks for stopping by.
second shot here by South Carolina. No good off the front room. Trying to get the second chance opportunity. They tipped it off the glass. Couldn't convert. And Oregon with a loose ball as South Carolina picks up a foul in the backcourt. That's a bad foul right there in the backcourt. Lamont Parrish shaking his head. That's number four as a team now for South Carolina. Oregon's got two. And that is on Zachary Davis. That's his second personal foul today. Oregon has possession. Rigsby sends it off to Kuznard. Kuznard at the right wing per over there. Kuznard dribbles up, drives, kick out to the corner. Touch pass over to Rigsby. Sends it on top over to Aquendo. Aquendo dribbles towards the right. Now takes it inside the key. Aquendo, turn around. No good off the back rim. Big rebound by Dante. Going up, no good off the back rim. Got fouled. And folly Dante. Just looks like he's like the bigger, stronger, more physical athlete on the floor. He's a mismatch dude out there right now. 6'11", jumping over a triple team to come up with that offensive rebound. I mean, this guy's healthy. He's explosive for Dante. He's been at Oregon for quite a bit of time. A senior right now. And um, it's taken him this long. Like, if they pick up the win today, you know how much that means for Enfali Dante. This dude has been riddled by injuries throughout his career. 6'11", big man from Bali, makes the first free throw. He's been playing forever at Oregon. Second free throw, no good by Dante. 14 even right now. Just He's got so much athleticism out there for Enfali Dante. Down to 9.20 left to play. First half, South Carolina with possession. Jacoby Wright has it at the March Madness logo. Sends it off to Davis at the wing. Davis moves it on top over to Colin Murray Boyles. Eight in the shot clock. Back out to Michi Johnson. Johnson drives. Dish out to the wing. Right takes the three. Hits it. 17-14 for South Carolina. 11% of perfect brackets remain. Oh, boy. Oregon almost turned it over there. Kwame Evans Jr. Rigsby moves it around the perimeter. Off to Aquendo now at the right wing. Aquendo passes on top over to Kuznard, former Gamecock. Transferred from South Carolina to Oregon. No good. Missed off the front by Kuznard. Rebound secured here for the Gamecocks. Michi Johnson. Dribble drive up to the free throw circle. Hand off to Davis. Moves it back out to the wing to right. Right. Drives inside and Kuznard. Passes out. Right wing with a three. They got another one. 20-14 for South Carolina. Back-to-back -back three is made. Michi Johnson lets it rain. That's a big three right there. This team has struggled from three-point range this season. For them to hit back-to-back -back threes, that is something that's huge right there for the Gamecocks. Oregon looking for a response. Dish out to the wing, Rigsby. Rigsby down to 12 in the shot clock. Tours is right around the perimeter. Sends it off to Aquendo outside with a wide-open three. Kuznard connects on it. 20-17. to 17. This is turning out to be a three-point shooting contest right now. And both of these teams making threes. Tracy in the stream, welcome in. Thanks for stopping in. 7.45 left to go. South Carolina up by three with possession. The pass goes across the floor. Right baseline dribble Zachary Davis. He is defended by Dante. Davis turns it over. Bad pass got intercepted by Evans Jr. for Oregon. Inside a key. Kuznar floater. That's a tough shot that goes down. It's a one-point game. That's a former South Carolina transfer now playing for Oregon. Jermaine Kuznard puts his team one and one. South Carolina has it back of the right corner perimeter. The pass gets floated off to the free throw circle. Colin Murray boils. It results in another turnover as Oregon intercepted it with Rigsby. And Rigsby but got bumped into by Michi Johnson on the floor. Picks up the reach and foul. Seven minutes left to go in the first right now. One point game here. 20-19. to 19. This is a good one as we will take the media timeout on the floor. Yeah, this looks like it has the looks to be a really solid finish in this one. We've been going back and forth, back and forth. Oregon started off with a 5-zip lead. And uh, South Carolina, after that, went on to a 11-2 run. And it's been back and forth trading baskets with both of these teams ever since. If you're new on the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Ring the notification bell as well if you like to uh, keep on coming back for future live streams here on the channel. I'll be back later tonight covering McNeese State versus Gonzaga as well. That'll be my final stream for tonight. Um, tomorrow, I'll have just one game. I'm, I'm out 
covering a couple games in person tomorrow during the afternoon, so I'll be doing Alabama against Charleston tomorrow at 7.35. Illinois has a one-point lead over Moorhead State at the half, 39-38. North Carolina is pounding Wagner right now, 82-56. And Armando Baycott's got a massive double-double for him, 20 points and 15 rebounds for UNC. This has been a really sloppy game for these two teams here. 11 combined turnovers so far. South Carolina with 6. Oregon is 5. South Carolina has turned it over twice in a row for them. So they really needed that media timeout for them to get their team back in order because they've started to turn it over a couple times so far. But yeah, this game has been playing more into the way of South Carolina because South Carolina is the better defensive team. Oregon's more like offensive-centric for them. This Oregon team though has exploded in some of their games in the second half. They looked really good. They start to crack down defenses in the second half for Oregon. They did that against Arizona in the Pac-12 tournament semis for them. They were down by 14. They came back and they won. I think they were trailing by 14 with like 12 minutes left too. And Oregon's been shooting the ball well today. 57% from the floor. It's just they haven't been able to get get enough rebounds, defensive rebounds. And South Carolina's attempted five shots greater than Oregon right now. Eight for 19 by South Carolina, 42% shooting. Oregon is 57% shooting, eight for 14 so far. And seven turnovers today for Oregon, too. They average only 10 turnovers per game. Jameson, welcome back in, man. Things going pretty well. Yeah, we saw earlier today, Michigan State had a lot of turnover issues, and they hadn't been having those turnover issues this season. So uh, this is kind of like a different environment, especially for the younger guys in Oregon. Got a couple really solid younger players in the team. That's first year is open off the inbound. And Zen Folly Dante who scores a wide-open layup for Oregon. Other seven minutes left to go before halftime. Just a miscommunication breakdown right there defensively for South Carolina. Don't see that too often. Talon Cooper dribbles up top of the key. He's working on Shellstead, the defender. Sends it out to his left over to Michi Johnson. Johnson down low. Had it blocked out of bounds. It's going to stay South Carolina ball. They've been active so far defensively down low. Kwame Evans Jr. Got a couple of guys with some length on this team. Evans Jr., 6'9 in the front court. And Folly Dante is the key one. That's 6'11. South Carolina took the three and he got fouled. Miles Stute's going to shoot three at the free throw line. Terrible foul picked up. Charge to Oregon. Closing out. And that is Evans Jr. who just picked up the block. Follows Stute from three point range. That's an awful foul right there. I mean, you got to read on the scouting report that this South Carolina team's not that great from three. And you follow him on a three-point attempt trying to close out. That's difficult to watch. First free throw. Got it. Able to pinwheel around. Bounced in to the net. He'll have a second one coming up here at the line for South Carolina. Second one missed. Third free throw just went down. So two out of three at the free throw line for South Carolina by Stute. Going to take a seat on the bench. The Reaper in the street, welcome in. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, just, uh, just crazy there. Finding uh, tall people. Matt Painter always finds like 
seven foot, usually like European dudes that he finds in the team that's like giants, like not like seven one, but he'll find like seven three, seven four for giants time and time again. Missed three by Oregon straight away as South Carolina has a six minutes left pass. Get deflected Oregon. Try to come up with a save either way. It was out of bounds. Going to see here who it's going to be last touched by. Great hustle though on the floor. Yeah, I think it's going to be last touched by Kwame Evans Jr. For Oregon. He jumped right into the front row. Of where the photographers are. Inbound for South Carolina. Missed three as it came up short for South Carolina. Eight to two via the bench for the Gamecock so far. Oregon with the ball. Top of the key with Evans Jr. Bounce pass goes to Dante. He's around the perimeter. Got to get down low. He does that right now. Kuznard at the left wing. Ten in the shot clock. Dante post up. He receives the pass. He's working on one defender. Draws a double team at the low block. Outside. Kuznar passes out. Right wing. Shellstad. Open three. Came up short. The rebound control for South Carolina. Things get a physical there as Tracy picks up the loose ball foul. Like, what is Oregon doing right now? Just bad fouls picking up on the floor. Like, they gotta start to keep their composure and stuff right now. That's a another just terrible foul. South Carolina clearly has the rebound and you come around and you try to clobber him and you pick up the foul i mean they're just making rookie mistakes right now they do have a couple of uh freshmen on the team right now for oregon that's like key players for them south carolina by one cooper has possession here for sc out to the left corner jacoby Wright. bounce pass outside michi johnson five minutes left to go johnson launches misses rim short and the rebound Pull down the far side of the floor by Evans Jr. Up the court here, attacking to the paint. Kuznard with a right hand. He scores up and in. Off the backboard, takes the lead for Oregon. Coast to coast right there by Jermaine Kuznard with nine points so far. South Carolina is going to slow it down, play their tempo. Ranking in the 345s this year and slowest tempo offense at all college basketball. If Oregon starts to get up then... Uh, it's going to be very tough for South Carolina. They're on almost a four-minute scoring drought right now for South Carolina, looking to get their offense back into a rhythm. At the low block, three in the shot clock for South Carolina, working their way inside the low post. Down low off the dump off. It's good for the layup. Jacoby Wright, nice cut to the hoop there. Assisted for South Carolina. It's a one-point Gamecocks lead. Yeah, Wagner got pounded. So uh, there's going to be no team from like the New York City metro area or New Jersey that pulls off a massive upset in the first round. Ooh, was this a shot clock violation? I think it might have been. Yeah, that ball is on his fingertips when the shot clock goes off by right. That's not going to count. That should be taken away. Right now it's 24-23. They put back 22 on the board. And this appears to be a shot clock violation charged to South Carolina. The basketball was still on his hands. By Jacoby Wright as he let it go at the buzzer. And uh, we will take the timeout here as well. So this is under review right now. But on that last replay, we saw the orange uh, behind the backboard with a buzzer go off. And the basketball is still clearly on the hands for South Carolina. Timeout on the floor. 23-22 Oregon at the moment. Down to 4.15 left to go before half. What a game so far. So we get taken into the TV timeout. Moorhead State with a one-point lead over Illinois, 40-39 to right now. That's the only other game that's currently going on at the moment. Arizona crushed Long Beach State by 20, 85-65. North Carolina demolished Wagner, 90-61. Nevada versus Dayton will tip off any minute from now. So that's the last game as part of this early afternoon slate. After that, Colorado State versus Texas at 650. Oakland versus Kentucky at 710. McNeese State versus Gonzaga 725. South Dakota State versus Iowa State 735. 
So we'll keep you guys posted on Moorhead State and Illinois. But Moorhead State right now with a one-point lead over Illinois currently. If you're doing a stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring that notification bell if you guys would like to be notified here for future live streams that cover basketball action, play-by-play, -play, college cheaps, NBA in the channel. Yep, that's uh, the Wagner squad that lost against Bryant in the student section gun in the fight at the end of the game classic, Peter Kissing Bryant from uh, two years ago. Yep, BYU lost against Duquesne. That, that BYU team just looks super slow from when I saw them play today. Um, the big man, Traore, he he missed two easy floaters for him. He, he could not finish at the rim to save his life today for Traore, for BYU. That was awful. And you look back at that game, that's what cost them today was those missed shots by Traore. Duquesne winning their first NCAA tournament game since 1969. Um, I believe we're around 75 subscribers away from 25K. So before I went live, we were at uh, 24, 9, 24 approximately. So we're about 75 subscribers away. South Carolina has yet to make a field goal in the last 4 minutes, 17 seconds. They have, they have erased away that last bucket before the media timeout, so it's no good. It was on the shooter's hands as the shot clock sounded. So that's a shot clock violation by South Carolina. Seven turnovers compared to eight made field goals right now. Oregon has also been struggling with the turnover issues. If Oregon can get going like they have in the second half, then Oregon can start to take control of this game. Bounce pass off to Dante. Dante brings along a double team, gets in the way. Shellstead, touch pass, right corner, open three, swoosh. It's goodbye. Jadri and Tracy at the right corner. Oregon with a four-point lead. They got shot makers on this team for Oregon. Almost came up with an interception. Left corner, open three, South Carolina. They brick another one. They're not known for their three-point shooting, but Oregon's allowing them to take those looks, and they cannot convert from the outside. Oregon will slow down tempo. Four-point advantage. If Oregon starts to get up by seven or eight, watch out because South Carolina plays a similar pace Compared to Virginia, Shellstead dribbling all over the place. Moves it out left corner off the floated pass. Lob, and it goes in somehow, and a foul to Jermaine Kuznard. Puts it up against his former team. Got it a drop plus one at the free throw line. I thought that was going to be a lob for Dante down low right there. He just floated up one. Looked like it was going directly to Dante at made the trajectory bouncing off the back rim and it dropped down into the net. Jordan on the street, welcome in. Um, I had a game last night for lacrosse that I was covering, so I was out last night. Uh, behind the arc fan, welcome back in, man. Yeah, I probably won't be back for uh, the next Celtic stream until next week, most likely, because there's a lot of like NCAA tournament games here that I plan on covering for the channel. The free throw is good right now, seven-point lead. 3.15 left to go before halftime. South Carolina on a five-minute field goal shooting drought right now. Got to get something going on. Hand off to the left corner. Jacoby right. Dribbles towards his right around the perimeter. Out to the top over to Mack. BJ Mack. Hand off. Goes over to Talon Cooper. BJ Mack and Oregon commits a reach and foul with 3.8 on the shot clock. Gee. I mean, Oregon with some bad fouls in this game. That they've had. That's their fifth right now. South Carolina's got seven. Oregon with some really, really bad fouls. They had one closing out on a three. That was way too late on the closeouts. Got some bad ones in South Carolina. Lucky that they're hanging in. Down by seven. Almost lost it. Here's a three taken with 12 on the shot clock. Missed off the back room for South Carolina. On the run out. Here goes Oregon taking it in transition. That's an offensive foul. Big one to take for the team there with a charge for the Gamecocks. Jacoby Wright takes the charge. It will go back to South Carolina. Number zero, Cario Aquendo just bulldozes, his, bulldozes him over. Wow. Dayton has tipped off against Nevada. By the way, Dayton leads 5-0 to zero in the opening minutes. So we'll keep you posted. Moorhead State leading Illinois right now, 45-43.
They had seven turnovers in the first six and a half minutes. That was the first turnover in the previous eight for Oregon. South Carolina lobs it out to the right block. B.J. Mack bouncing bodies, backs his way inside the low post. Mack down low, had it stripped, and he turns it over. Oregon forces the turnover. The Ducks looking to extend the lead right now. Top of the key, Kuznar bounce pass down low. Dante held up, gets fouled. That's just a mismatch there down low. I don't know if South Carolina has anybody who can handle Enfali Dante, but now they're in the bonus, and Enfali Dante will shoot in the 1-1. South Carolina, not much size on their team. Six foot eight, BJ Mack and Colin Murray Boyle, six foot seven. So he's a force down low going up against six eleven. And Folly Dante just dominant big man. First free throw bounces in. Largest lead of the game right now for Oregon. Uh thirty to twenty two right now the score. Jermaine Kuznard has 12 points right now against his former team. Second free throw by Dante. Yikes. That looked like a Shaq free throw. It grazed off the front rim. This has been a rough first half. Seven turnovers by South Carolina. Eight fouls and eight field goals made for the Gamecocks right now. Jumper, mid-range, high archer, missed off the back rim. They are Brick City after Brick City as Shellstead looks to push it. Handoff. To Kuznard, he's got 12 looking for more. Pro hop inside, Kuznard against his former team. Drops it in, it's good for two. Jeremy and Kuznard for Oregon. 140 left to go. Kuznard with 14 so far in the first half. South Carolina in deep trouble. They play a tempo similar style to Virginia. Down by 10, they've yet to make a field goal in the last 6 minutes and 45 seconds. And Oregon commits their 7th personal foul reaching in. I took Nevada in that one there. That's got a lot of scoring. Dayton leads 9-7 to seven right now against Nevada. So South Carolina, we'll see if they can make a free throw here at the line. you got to hit these as Shellstead will take a seat on the bench for Oregon, get some rest right now, but... I mean, this is dreadful for South Carolina. They haven't made a bucket in the last six minutes. Plus, first one's good. And a one and one by Colin Murray Boyles. Yeah, no problem, Jeffrey. No problem, man. It's just out there for fun. Second shot. Got it. Really needed those free throws, and they made them. Substitute here, Miles Stute checks back onto the floor for South Carolina, number 30. Colin Murray Boyles, he made the free throws, will head out. So Stute, six foot seven in the front court. They just have no answer right now for Enfali Dante, and lucky that uh, Dante hasn't torched them even more. He's got eight points, three for four from the floor. Lob down low, Dante brings along a double team. No good that time as he tried to go back door. South Carolina comes up with a rebound. Down to the final minute, 10 left to go before halftime. Just 8 for 26 shooting by South Carolina in the opening half. Zachary Davis down low gets clobbered and followed. So he'll, he'll, he'll shoot 2 here down to 105 left. Yeah, probably because they had... Um, they, they played in that playing game last year for Nevada, so that's probably a reason why. Um, I, I picked them because they got some pretty good guards in that team. In Dayton, I just haven't been able to trust them lately. They, they've they picked up some bad losses along the way, slipping down the late stretch of the season. They were 3-3 three and three in the A-10 in the last six games to close out the year. First free throw is good by South Carolina by Michi Johnson. If you're new on the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring the notification bell. If, You'd like to be notified for future live streams I cover. I cover basketball action here at a channel play-by-play. -play. College basketball games throughout the March Madness Tournament NBA games. Dana Altman takes a timeout on the floor for Oregon. The Ducks with a six-point lead with 105 left to go before halftime as we'll take the timeouts. Everything clicking here for Oregon. Jermaine Kuznard, 14 points against his former team in the first half. He's 6-for-9 shooting. And Folly Dante, a matchup issue for South Carolina, drawing a lot of double teams. 
gone to the free throw line frequently. Not a great free throw shooter, though. Just 2 for 5 at the charity stripe, but he has 8 points on 3 for 4 from the floor right now, leading the team with 4 rebounds. Uh, South Carolina with 7 points, led by B.J. Mack. They got 8 points off the bench. One key, though, they lead bench points 8 to 2. Feel free, type in the chat who you like in this game. Type it in Oregon or South Carolina. This is my second stream out of three today. I'll also be covering McNeese State versus Gonzaga later tonight at 7.15 p.m. So feel free to come back for the evening one. Uh, Illinois, one-point lead over Moorhead State, 46-45. Nevada versus Dayton tied up at 11. Got to be uh, even less with this uh, Illinois-Moorhead State game, especially if Moorhead State somehow finds a way to win it. I, that, that's what I that's what I said in my stream. I wouldn't be shocked if Moorhead State pulls it out. Um, looking good right now for those who took Moorhead State plus 11 and a half in the points for that game. I, I picked Illinois, but I, I think it's going to be very, very close, and that's what it's what, that's what's happening right now. I had said during my last stream that Moorhead State's giving me the vibe that it's going to be like one of those games um, similar to how Illinois played against Chattanooga two years ago in the first round. I think it's going to be similar to that. And uh, by the way, South Carolina's head coach, former head coach of Chattanooga, uh, Lamont Paris. That, so he was the head coach two years ago, 2022, when Chattanooga lost by one in the opening round to Illinois. That was one heck of a game. One oh five left to go before halftime in South Carolina creeping in this game by made free throws. They are really struggling to generate any sort of offense, making shots. And Oregon's not really known for their defense. They're just forcing South Carolina to deep take deep shots, and South Carolina is only shooting thirty one percent from the floor. Eight for twenty six, three for eleven in the first half. So here we go. Final minute left to go before halftime. Jackson Shellstead returns back on the floor. Off to his teammate number four, Brennan Rigsby. At the left wing perimeter, it's been the Jermaine Kuznard show with 14. Lob down low. Dante underneath as Dante commits the travel there. So he was trying to bait the defense into contact, but that's number nine right now for a turnover. This is by far as far of a thing that we've seen this game be clean. Very sloppy game today being performed by both of these teams right now, especially when it's come down to turnover issues. South Carolina down by six, 40 seconds left to go. Just 30% shooting, and they missed a shot off the low bunny. Dante able to alter it. Ref say play on. Did not get a piece of that ball as... That was very close to being a goal 10, but they say play on. Kuznard slows it down. The one second differential shot clock and game clock to close out going to halftime. Kuznard defended by Zachary Davis. 14 seconds. March Madness logo for Jermaine Kuznard with 14 points leading the way for Oregon. Kuznard dribbles up, drives, kick out to the corner. Shellstead with five. Shellstead deep two. Oh, he hits it. Jackson Shellstead right to the shoot right before the buzzer. Three-fourths court shot by South Carolina. Oh, they hit it. Open up the bank right there at the buzzer for South Carolina. They got it at the buzzer. If they're going to count it as 34-29 to 29 going into halftime. Wow. Got to see a replay of that. I'm not sure. I would like to see a replay of when he launched it. Three-fourths court shot. Oh, yeah. I think that's clean. Right there by number 55, Talon Cooper. It hit all glass. Yeah, that is clean right there by Cooper, I believe. 
Open up the bank on a three-fourths court shot three by Talon Cooper for SC at the buzzer. Incredible. Wow. That gives South Carolina some big-time momentum going into halftime. Oregon with massive momentum as well. They were trailing. They end the first half on a 20-9 run for Oregon going into halftime here, 34-29. What a game in the first half. We'll get you guys caught up with the other games going down. Uh, right now, Illinois taking on Moorhead State, but wow. Yep, it's been confirmed. 34-29 going into half here. That's massive for South Carolina, a team that's been struggling from three-point range in basically this entire game. Fourth main three of the game. Hit all glass. So right now, since we're at half, if you're doing a stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe Make sure to ring the notification bell if you like to be notified for future live streams I cover here on the channel. I cover basketball action, play-by-play, -play, college, college hoops, NBA on the channel. What a start. Let's see what else we got going on. I'm going to update you guys on Moorhead State against Illinois. Illinois started to run away with it a little bit. Yeah, 57-48 to 48 right now. Illinois has the lead with under 12 minutes left to play. Nevada up over Dayton, 14-13 right now in the first half. That's a 10-7 versus seven matchup. Nevada with a one-point lead at the moment over Dayton. Dayton just responded with a layup off a backdoor cutter. So it's 15-14 Dayton. I think we're going to have a great finish here for the second half. Oregon is shooting lights out, by the way, too. 60.9% from the floor by Oregon. They're 14 for 23 shooting. The issue for them has been turnovers. They turned it over way too many times. Nine turnovers in the first half by Oregon. Seven by South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina really struggling to make shots in this game. Nine for 28. 32% shooting. I'm kind of shocked that they came out and they attempted 12 threes. Um, they, 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 they went out, they attempted 12 threes. They attempted 16 twos. In the first half. And to obviously the size for Enfali Dante at 6 foot 11. Making things tough down low for South Carolina. Oregon just has a much bigger size advantage there. Down low. But the rebounds are even. 16 to 16. It's just Oregon's doubling up South Carolina in the paint. 16 to 8. And uh, Dante's bringing along just a lot of mass mismatch advantages down low. This Nevada Dayton game is going back and forth. 17 15 for Dayton right now with a one point lead under 10 minutes left to go before half. Deron Holmes, one of the top players in the nation, just um, Nevada's going to find an answer for him. Going to flip over to Moorhead State in uh, Illinois. I think Illinois is getting on a little bit of a run in that game right now. Last stream later today will be... Gonzaga versus McNeese State. 
I'll be at 7 15 p.m. Eastern time feel free to join in if you guys would like for that one, too So I'm going to see what we got for a percentage right now. Hey, what's good, Malika? Welcome in. So after the North Carolina game that they wrapped up against Wagner, down to 10.8% of brackets remain perfect right now. So 10.8% incoming on Illinois Moorhead State. 12 minutes left to go. Illinois. Or uh, under 12 minutes left to play. Illinois with a 9-point lead, 57 to 48 right now. Hey, there we go. Thanks so much, uh, Adrian, for joining in, man. Wow, Duke's Caleb Foster is out for the remainder of the NCAA tournaments. He hasn't played since February 27th, so that's according to John Rostein of... CBS Sports. That's an update there two hours ago. The other injury update was uh, one that I updated in the last game. Langston Love for Baylor, averaging 11 points per game, is out for this weekend's games for Baylor. So the first round and second round games for Baylor. Langston Love is listed out. They take on the Colgate tomorrow for Baylor. Still a long way to go in uh, Illinois versus Moorhead State right now in that game. It's Illinois by 11, though. 59-48 to 48 with 11.30 left to play. Dayton holding on to a one-point lead over Nevada, 17-16. Vaughn, welcome back in, man. Moorhead State hanging in, though. They just made a three to cut the lead to eight. Starting to play in the direction of Illinois. Illinois offense starting to get into a little bit more of a rhythm in the second half. Just like that. Nice little follow-away jumper that was just made there for Illinois with Domask. Marcus Domask, he's only got four in this game today scoring. He's got eight assists though for him for Illinois. I mean, Moorhead State's hanging in, and Illinois just forced a turnover. Yeah, this is getting out of control right now for Moorhead State. They get a player who's down, just got injured on the last play as they had to stop time due to injury. And it uh, looks like he's all right for Moorhead State. Slipped on the floor. Looks like he might have tweaked it, his ankle. Yeah, his left ankle looked weird right there and had to substitute out of the game. So right now we're just at halftime. Thanks all for joining in, being a part here in the stream. If you're new in the channel, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. 
Ring that notification bell back for future live streams as well. And Illinois start to cook right now. They just buried a three to go up by 13. 64 to 51 for Illinois with 10 minutes left to go. Part of a 16 to 3 scoring run in the last four minutes. Pouring into points for the Fighting Illini. Winner of the game that I'm covering, Oregon and South Carolina, will take on Creighton in the second round. Creighton dismantled Akron in the first game today. Yeah, this is getting tough right now for Moorhead State. Illinois keeps on pushing it up the floor. There's so much you can do if you're Moorhead State in this game. Illinois just keeps on pushing, 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 pushing. Terrence Shannon Jr. with 21 for Illinois right now. He's got 22. He just made the free throw. Uh, uh, so what did he miss so far? There's been one upset. Um, Duquesne upset BYU in the second game today. But other than that, it's been pretty much chalk the rest of the way. So just one upset in 11 versus 6. Right now, Oregon looking to be the second 11 to be the 6 today, leading by 5. And that's where I feel like the, a lot of the upsets are going to be. It's going to be winning that 12 to 5 gap this year in the tournament. So any games taking place that's like, of course, you're going to have the even pick up games, the 8 9s, but 7 10s, 11 6s, and then 12 5s, and probably throwing a 13 4. And there, we'll see if that does happen. I was thinking with the craziness of this conference tournament, we're probably going to see all these wild upsets like a 15 over 2 once again. But that hasn't happened so far. Arizona took control of their game, beat Long Beach State. North Carolina, uh, as a one seed Beat the 16 of Wagner really easily. And uh, Illinois starting to pour it on right now. Dane Danger has 21 on a perfect 9 for 9 shooting for Illinois. The wheels have just fallen off right now for Moorhead State. It's a really dangerous offensive loaded team with Illinois. So Illinois, they're going to advance. They'll take on Duquesne. That's basically a run right there to the Sweet 16, I would imagine. Going up against Duquesne in their next game. Moorhead State not so fast, though. Buries the three. 68-54 with 8.42 left. Illinois up by 14 in that game. Hey, what's good? Jason on the street. Welcome in, man. It's been a pretty good game so far. Um, there was a three-fourths court shot at the buzzer that South Carolina made off a of bank to go into halftime. And South Carolina had no momentum going their way going into half. 34-29, and then they bank a three right at the buzzer. That's critical. We'll see if those three points do help them out in the long run at the end of this game. So Oregon closed out the first half in a 20-9 to run. Just way too many turnovers for Oregon so far. They turned it over nine times in the first half. They average around nine turnovers per game this season for them. And turning over to basketball just a bunch in half one. So Illinois starting to run away. 
right now. 70-54 to 54 with 8 minutes left. 16-point lead over Moorhead State. Dayton has a 4-point lead right now against Nevada. 20-16 to 16 with 7-11 left to go in the first. Still a long way from being done in this uh, Nevada-Dayton game right now. Right now we're currently at halftime between Oregon and South Carolina. South Carolina just having a lot of trouble trouble so far with their shot efficiency. That's how the course of the season has gone for them having a lot of difficulty with shot efficiency. But they're led first by their defense. They're a defensive-minded team. But Oregon putting up 34 helps out the cause for Oregon. It was looking solid early on for South Carolina, but Oregon right now is dropping down 34 to first half. The game is tilting into Oregon's direction. Uh, Oregon led by 10 as many. They were up 32 to 22 at one point. South Carolina led by six early on. They were down five to zero. They came on back. They led 11 to five for South Carolina. Dayton just made a three. 23 16. Dayton. Largest lead in the game up by seven against Nevada. Yeah, that's awesome, Jeffrey. Yeah, I took a look at uh, some of the videos right there for um, Jamestown and Newport. It's awesome, man. See, if Nevada can't get this game back within reach, Dayton almost buried a three there. It's going to get very difficult for Nevada. Dayton, similar to like Virginia and South Carolina, they play the slowest tempo style offenses in the nation. Like This is not a good sign for Nevada right now, putting up 16 points with under 6 minutes left to go before half. Not a good sign for Nevada at the moment. The Mountain West is looking to prove itself in the bracket. Things looked early, uh, good early on. With Colorado State picking up a big win over Virginia. But Nevada just not in their own zone right now for this game. Yeah, Illinois is just smashing Moorhead State right now. Twenty-five to eighteen, Dayton, with a lead with under five left to go before halftime against Nevada. By the way, Moorhead State is destroying, or uh, Illinois is destroying Moorhead State. It's seventy-five Illinois, Moorhead State fifty-four. That game was super close with like thirteen minutes left to go, but the last seven Illinois is just taking them by storm. Nevada just made a big three to crawl within four. Hey, best of luck watching the Red Sox tonight there, Jeffrey. Enjoy the rest of your night, man. Thanks all for patiently waiting right now at halftime. Going to start the second half in a couple minutes from now. If you're new in the stream first time or here, Make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or ring that notification bell for future live streams of the channel. Nevada crawling back in. They hit a tough follow-away baseline shot. It's a two-point game. 
25-23, Dayton with a two-point lead. The Ducks of Oregon holding on to a five-point halftime advantage. About to start the second half of action here. If you're new to the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Oregon shooting the ball lights out from the floor, 61%, limiting South Carolina to just 32% in the first half. But nine turnovers crushing the cause for Oregon, yet they still have a five-point lead at the moment. Jermaine Kuznard for Oregon, 14 points against his former team, leading all scores. Eight points by Enfali Dante. He's a matchup nightmare for South Carolina. South Carolina, just not enough front court size. Taken on 6 foot 11. Enfali Dante in the floor. Four assists as well by Jermaine Kuznard. South Carolina led by BJ Mack. He's got seven points. South Carolina, lucky that they were able to bank a three. At the buzzer on a three-fourths court shot to get this game winning five going into half. DD, welcome in. Thanks for stopping by. Hope all is going well. Dana Altman, head coach for Oregon. He has led his team to seven straight NCAA tournaments. All of those being first-round victories for the Ducks. Lamont Powers looking for his first-ever NCAA tournament win. Former head coach for Chattanooga. They came one point away. From picking off Illinois two years ago in the first round of the bracket. Here we go. Oregon. Right to left on the floor. The Ducks have it first. Green jerseys. Yellow numbers. Yellow letters for Oregon. South Carolina. White uniforms. Maroon numbers. Maroon letters. For today's matchup for the Gamecocks. Oregon's going right to left. South Carolina's going left to right. Oregon. Off a quick foul committed by South Carolina. We'll get the inbound. Oregon has it. At the top of the key with Kwame Evans Jr. Sends it on top over to Shellstead. Shellstead opened up the first half, making a three. Evans at the wing. Evans bounce past Kuznard. Shot clock down to 10 here. Kuznard with 14, the game leader. Kuznard dribbles up, drives inside the paint, puts it up and no good off the glass. Tip in, right back for Kuznard for two. Up and then off the backboard. Resilient possession right there for Jermaine Kuznard. Seven point lead for Oregon. South Carolina started off 50% shooting 6 for 12 from the floor ever since. They've been 3 for 16, and their last shot included was a 3 fourths court shot 3 that they banked in at the buzzer. South Carolina, tough shot down low. No good off the glass too long. Missed by B.J. Mack. Rebound secure by Oregon. 7-point advantage for the Ducks through the opening minutes. Of the second half, lob down low underneath Dante. Pivot right to the rim. He scores up and then off the backboard for two for Enfali Dante. Up to double figures now for Dante in this game for Oregon. Ward, welcome back in, man. Glad to have you back in, brother. South Carolina really needs a bucket right now. Dante in a mismatch as uh, he's been just a matchup nightmare. Nice bounce pass down low. Stute finds Talon Cooper. Scores for two. Seven point advantage for Oregon. Oregon going to slow down tempo. Cooper up to seven now for South Carolina. Top of the key, Shellstead. Moves it off to the left wing. Jadrian Tracy on top goes back over to Shellstead. 12 on the shot clock. Shellstead towards his right. Just with three in this game. Moves it out on top over to Evans Jr. Shot clock down to five now. Kwame Evans Jr. drives to the cup. Got blocked out of bounds from behind, though. They're going to roll it. A clean blocker? No, I believe. It's down to three in the shot clock here. Was there some contact from behind? That's the question. No, there was not. So that was a clean block. So it's going to be three in the shot clock. Oregon has to hoist. Jumper. Oh, Dante buries it. And a folly Dante. The deep two baseline. Jay has that in the bag as well. Wow. He has really improved his craft. 40 to 31 to Oregon. Dante's up to 12. South Carolina moves it along. Miles Stute passes down low. Get that out of there. Huge rejection by Dante. As he swats it all the way to the front row.
Get that out of there, N Folly. Holy smokes. That was a rocket ship right there by N Folly. 11 on the shot clock. North Carolina takes the three at the quarter. They bury it. Tillon Cooper, fifth made three in the game for South Carolina. Quick up the floor in transition, and Oregon had it deflected out of bounds far side by South Carolina. Turning out to be a really electric start here in the second half. Inbound goes to Shellstead. Three for five by Oregon this half. South Carolina two for four. Shellstead moves it off. Tracy, jumper deep two. Off the mark, no good. Dante, offensive rebound. Chance for a putback. Dante gets fouled. Two free throws coming up now at the line for N. Folly. Dante for Oregon. So he gets Josh Gray on the personal foul. Josh Gray in the game right now. He's averaging just three points per game this season, but he is in there to match up with Dante, which Gray is 6'11". Dante is 6'11". They have no answers with their front court players. That's the usual front court players to defend Dante down low. First free throw is good by Dante. Second shot. Right down the middle. Start to make free throws as well. Oregon building up an 8 point lead. That's the third personal foul picked up. Charged number 12, Zachary Davis. On the floor, too. So they got him on that one. Deflected, intercepted. Shell stand out ahead of the pack as he takes it for the made layup. Jumped it off the pick. Six right there by Jackson. Shell stand intercepted as he jumped in the route. Took it home for the wide open bucket. Down low, South Carolina. Drawing a double team at the low block. Pass goes inside. Dante converts in the steal. Oregon with a ball once again. Back to back. Terrible turnovers by South Carolina. Oregon looking for their largest lead of the game. Shellstead at the edge of the March Madness logo. Has it now with 15 on the shot clock. Sends it out to the right wing perimeter. Kwame Evans Jr. Evans towards his left. Hand off back to Shellstead. Shot clock down to 8 now. Shellstead just scored a last bucket off the steal. Top of the key. Shellstead. Shellstead thinks about a step back. Moves it outside. Kuznard 30 footer. Off the back rim. No good. A rebound secured by South Carolina. Gamecocks have to push it now. Trailing by 10. Not their recipe. They almost turned it over on the floating pass down the near side. Bounce pass underneath going up and they get fouled. Colin Murray Boyles will shoot two at the free to line as he gets fouled by number 10, Kwame Evans Jr. of Oregon. Hey, that's awesome, Jeffrey. Best of luck there helping out uh, your friend who's the baseball coach. That's incredible. Great to hear, man. Nevada, by the way, has a five-point lead over Dayton, 30-25. to And that's going to be a question mark in this game for Dayton. Will Anthony Grant be able to make enough adjustments throughout the game as they have surrendered a lead currently for Dayton? They led by five, and now they trail by five. Illinois is blowing the doors off Moorhead State, 81-60. First free throw missed to the line for South Carolina. I mean, this is not an offense that's built to come from behind in these types of games has been more through their defense this season second free throw no good they go empty that trip at the free throw line as Dante collects the defensive rebound so 0 for 2 at the free throw line with Colin Murray Boyles and now Oregon with a chance to see if they can build up on their lead tied for the largest lead up by 10 oh what a pass right there soared up with a two handed alley flush by Dante Exploding off the rooftop, 16 by Ed Folly Dante on 6 for 7 shooting. Largest lead today for Oregon, South Carolina. Going to get back in this game or it's going to get real bad rather quick. A lot of dribbling around the perimeter. Michi Johnson, deep range 3 from the logo, swoosh. Really needed that one by Michi Johnson as he sinks down the triple. 9 point lead, Oregon with possession, Kuznard. At the left wing perimeter, Kuznar dribbles, drives right down the lane inside. He scores up and in off the backboard. Good for a two for Oregon by Jermaine Kuznar. 11-point lead for the Ducks. Looking like a machine as a late here. South Carolina moves the round of perimeter. Up fake at the top of the key. Cooper dribbles up. Now back out to the left corner perimeter. 
Talon Cooper at the left wing. Shot clock's down to 10. Cooper, spin move down low inside. Get that out of here. Huge rejection by Enfali Dante. Here goes Oregon. Oregon up the floor. Takes the three. They got it. Bang, bang. Splashing it down in the timeout. Taken on the floor by South Carolina. Jermaine Kuznard. Have yourself a game against your former team. Dana Altman. It is March. Right behind Tom Izzo when it comes down to winning games in the month of March in the tournament. We have a timeout taken on the floor. 51 to 37, Oregon. A machine right now for the green team. Oregon by storm on a 17 to 8 second half advantage. Right now, shooting 62% from the floor. South Carolina in deep trouble, 35% shooting. Kind of similar tempo offense to Virginia. In Dayton at the bottom of college basketball in the 350s, and this is not their recipe right now. Oregon lighting up South Carolina's defense. South Carolina this season was top 50 in fewest points allowed, and Oregon right now is ripping to shreds this SC defense at the moment. What a game by the Ducks. And Folly Dante, just a mismatch out there. Jermaine Kuznard, a walking bucket. 21 by Kuznard, 16 by Dante on 6 for 7 shooting. That includes an alley oop lob on a cross court pass fed by Oregon. If you're new on the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or ring the notification bell. If you'd like to be notified for future live streams, Illinois looking good. Final minute leading Moorhead State, 84 to 67. Nevada looking to lead at the half, and they are up by seven over Dayton, 32 to 25. Nevada has flipped the switch after trailing by five. They have gone into a 12 point swing and a lead by seven in the final minute before half over Dayton. So uh, yeah, looking good for Vegas's picks right now, and uh. I've got all three of these teams in my bracket, Illinois, Oregon, and Nevada, and things looking well right now. Tipping off at 6.50 will be Colorado State versus Texas. Oakland taking on Kentucky at 7.10, and then the big one. I'll be back for McNeese State taking on Gonzaga at 7.25 later today for that game. South Dakota State will take on Iowa State. St. Peter's against Tennessee in the nightcap. Past 9 o'clock, same as NC State, Texas Tech. Sanford against Kansas. That should be an interesting one at 9.55. And then Drake will take on Washington State in a late game tonight at 10.05. Winner this game will face Creighton. And Oregon right now is rolling. And Folly Dante just looks like an absolute animal on the floor. Just jumping all over the place, altering shots. Uh, he is super explosive. He has got two blocks right now by Dante, altering more shots left and right. I mean, nobody can match up against Dante right now. He is a matchup nightmare. He is back. He is healthy. Um, didn't play in all the games this season for Oregon. He was dealing with injuries, but he is back in the lineup, and he is incredibly explosive. We look at here as this backdoor lob, incredible pass. It was Jadrian Tracy who threw a cross-court lob at the wing of the perimeter off to Dante. And Dante just behind the D threw it down off the rooftop. And then the transition three made by Kuznard. Everything clicking for Oregon. 14-point lead under 15 minutes left to go. South Carolina being outscored 17-8 to in the second half. Jumper mid-range. No good. Pinwheeled around. And Oregon collects the defensive rebound with Brendan Rigsby. Shellstead moves it up the floor. Kuznard keeps on firing. Oh, he keeps on delivering. Jeremy and Kuznard bears another three. 17 point lead for Oregon. This team is sizzling out of the building right now. Kuznard has 24 points. South Carolina looking for some sort of offense here. Number one team in Ken Palm a luck category this season, and that luck has a. Uh, not look so hot today in this game for South Carolina as they turn it over. Dante completes the steal. Oregon will slow it down. This game is well in check right now for Oregon. 17 point advantage. Seventh steal of the game just a moment ago. Plus two blocks by Dante. They got six blocks as a team. Kuznard with 24 at the left wing. Lob down low. Dante with position. Dante going up gets fouled. Two shots at the free to line as he gets knocked down by Josh Gray. 
did the SEC really face plant in this tournament? We'll see what happens with St. Peter's versus Tennessee, but Mississippi State with a tough game today. South Carolina right now with a no-show. And uh, Texas A&M very well could be a no-show against Nebraska like every single year. Texas A&M has been consistently in the tournaments. And uh, we're going to take a time out on the floor right now. 13.37 left to go. And Folly Dante will be shooting two shots coming up at the free to line for Oregon with a 17-point lead. Yeah, this could be a very scary tournament for the SEC. Very, very scary. Uh, some of these teams had terrible losses in the non-conference slate against mid-majors. Auburn lost against App State. Kentucky lost against UNC Wilmington. This could be a bad one for the SEC. Mississippi State lost against Southern. Hey, there we go. Illinois, big win over Moorhead State, 85-69, to the final score. Nevada leads by 9 at the half against Dayton, 34-25. to So for the SEC, they got Auburn, who's going to be taking on Yale in the first round. Mississippi State lost already to Michigan State. Alabama, they've been a nightmare defensively. They do not play defense. They play tomorrow against Charleston. I'll be streaming that game. Um, so I'll be streaming later tonight my final stream, McNeese State versus Gonzaga. Um, I'm out during the day tomorrow afternoon. I'm announcing my first ever Division One softball game over at Stonehill during the afternoon as they'll be playing St. Francis University of Pennsylvania. Um, that's at 1 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but they should be back in time to cover Alabama versus Charleston at 7.35. Uh, since my softball, I, I was actually supposed to have it on Saturday since those games got pushed up tomorrow due to rain. I'm hoping to stream probably a triple header on Saturday and Sunday as well, either a double header or a triple header depending on the games. We got almost 50 in the chat right now. If you're new to the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe Ring the notification bell as well. And thanks all for joining in to cover basketball action on the channel. Play-by-play. -play. College hoops here. Streams throughout the March Madness tournament and NBA games as well. So, yeah. Auburn representing the SEC. Mississippi State. Alabama. South Carolina. Tennessee. Which takes on St. Peter's. We know that story. St. Peter's is a 15 once again. Florida. Kentucky. Texas A&M. Those are the teams representing the SEC, and the SEC is in danger of going 0-2 in this bracket right now. SEC was very overrated, in my opinion, this season. A conference that had a bunch of offense, little defense to it, but some of these teams are the opposite, like South Carolina that had a bunch of defense, more so a physical type of team, but very little offense, and that offense right now is really sputtering. Dante goes 1-for-2 at the free to line. 55-37. Dana Altman gets his best out of his team in March. Seven straight first-round victories in the tournament for Altman since he's been the head coach at Oregon. Determined to face his former program, Creighton, in the round of 32 on Saturday. Huge contest by Dante right there, but an even better three at the corner made by Michi Johnson. They really needed that bucket there for SC. Down to 13 minutes left. Oregon by 15. Kuznard sends it off to the wing off to Rigsby. Rigsby at the left wing perimeter. Moves it out free throw circle into the hands to Dante. Dante at the free throw circle with some space. Bounce pass goes to Kuznard. Kuznard with 24. Looking to add more. Kuznard mid-range. Got it. A bounce. It's good for two. What can he not do? Jimmy and Kuznard with a bucket. 26 by Kuznard. That's on 11 for 16 shooting. Against his former team in this game. He averages 15 points per game. He explodes for 26 right now. South Carolina with the ball. They got a player at the scorer's table about to check in. Bounce pass off the roll down. Couldn't convert on the two. Oh no. And Dante is down. Dante is down right now. And he is in pain. Grabbing his... Uh, he's grabbing his neck area for Dante. Took a hard fall down to the hardwood for Dante. Going to need him for the next matchup. He is shaken up, but he's going to play through it. So Dante shaken up in the last play. The big man. Ooh! 
He took an elbow right there, right to the lower part of the chin. Number 33, Josh Gray for South Carolina. Lowered the elbow into end folly. Dante at the chin as Dante went down hard. It was called a defensive foul committed by Dante. And Dante, yeah, he's feeling his lower chin right now. He's in some pain. He's going to check out of the game. Gray converted on the first free throw. That should have been offensive right there. Charged to Gray. But instead, it was a defensive foul picked by Dante. The referees did not catch it. One for two at the free throw. I missed the second one by Gray. South Carolina has been horrendous at the free throw line today. They are 7 for 15, 47% at the free throw line. Coke on the stream, welcome in. Kuznard sends it out to the perimeter, top of the key over to Rigsby. Rigsby down to 10 on the shot clock. Moves it out right wing to Tracy. Tracy off to Kuznard. Kuznard with 26, rises for the jumper. Off the mark, no good. A rebound pulled down by Miles Stute for South Carolina. South Carolina looking to push it in transition here. They float up the runner, get it a go, plus the foul. Michi Johnson with a bucket plus one at the free throw line. Getting a little bit of momentum here for SC. 14 point game. 11.52 left to go. 57 to 43. The scores will take the timeout with under 12 left to play. Here we go. South Carolina starting to make a run right now. If you're new in the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Ring that notification bell as well. Michi Johnson up to 11 points. The top score for South Carolina. 10 by Talon Cooper. It's been a Jermaine Kuznard show today against his former team. 26 points by Kuznard in this game. 17 by Enfali Dante with 6 rebounds. I'll be back later tonight covering McNeese State versus Gonzaga. If you'd like to join in, feel free to do so. Right now, the other game's at halftime. Dayton, or uh, Nevada leads Dayton at the half, 34-25. Hit us up in the chat who you guys like to win this game. Oregon or South Carolina. So only uh, only three people in the bracket challenge actually right now have the have a perfect bracket still six for six currently. Uh, plans this weekend. I was supposed to have softball on Saturday. I got pushed up to tomorrow that I'm announcing for. So I, so I only have one stream for tomorrow. I'll I plan on covering Charleston against Alabama tomorrow night. I'll be out during the afternoon. Um, probably streaming throughout the course of the weekend. Um, also want to hang out with my girlfriend too on Saturday. So. Um, I'll have to see when I can do the games on Saturday or so. Probably either 2 or 3 on Saturday, depending on the timing of the game. We don't know who will play yet until they release the schedules. Hey, what's good, Alex? Welcome back in the stream, man. Gerardo in the stream, welcome in, taking South Carolina for this one. They're fighting their way right back into this game. This Enfali Dante has just been a matchup nightmare for South Carolina to defend all throughout the course of this matchup here. They get a really good transition offense for Oregon. Really, really good transition offense there. Yeah, that's right. Bryce at the top. So uh, Bryce and then uh, Bradley and Go Chiefs. So just three people remain. Uh, Vegas and behind the arc fan is right behind. South Carolina in the bonus uh, at the at the free throw line. So they had an and one there, and they missed the free throw off the front rim. It's been a rough today at the free throw line for South Carolina. They're just seven for fifteen. Right now, shooting free throws. Oregon with possession. Top of the free throw circle, Kuznar. 26 points today against his former team. Moves it out to the wing of the perimeter off to Rigsby. 
Brennan Rigsby down to five of the shot clock. Rigsby top of the key into the hands here of Shellstead. Shellstead has to launch. Deep two jumper at the buzzer. No good. Off the side of the rim. Offensive rebound. Put back chance as Kwame Evans got fouled. South Carolina didn't box out. Evans was able to trail the shot. Come up with an offensive rebound. And he got fouled going up in the shooting motion. So this will be two free throws here at the line for Oregon with Kwame Evans Jr. As he allows Miles Stute to pick up the shooting foul. Entire starting five for South Carolina has two personal fouls each. Three personal fouls by Tracy of Oregon. Two each between Evans and Shellstead. And the first free throw is good for Oregon. The second free throw rattles in by Kwame Evans Jr. The ability to make their free throws has been helpful for Oregon for the most case. They're 8 for 12 right now as a team at the free throw line. Shooting the ball lights out. They're 60.5% from the floor, limiting South Carolina to a very low percentage at 39.5% right now. The Gamecocks have it at the left wing. Miles Stutes. His pass goes over to the far side corner to Lon Cooper. Bounce pass off the baseline dribble, and that's a layup made by Zachary Davis for two. Good job to play make there by Cooper with an assist. 11 minutes left to go. South Carolina 6 for 10 this half. Oregon 9 for 15. Hey, I'll see you back out uh, later today. Um, Andrew, thanks for joining in, man. Top of the key, Kuznard. Kuznard, 12 on the shot clock, dribbles up, drives inside, low block. Kuznard floats him a tough shot, no good. Loose ball, battle for the loose ball, and Kuznard gets called in the loose ball foul. Good hustle there, but couldn't track it down off the loose ball. South Carolina with possession. Down by 14. Cooper moves it back outside to the wing. The three. It's good. They're making this a game right now. It's an eight-point game. BJ Mack on point right there. Trifecta from the perimeter. Yikes. That is a tough one right there. Having a Summit League team over a Big 12 team. Yikes. Anything could happen. We shall see. Kuznard around the perimeter. Got bumped into and fouled. South Carolina picks up their fifth personal foul this half. Oregon will get the inbounds. Under 10 minutes left to go. Hand off. Kuznard spots up with a three. Nothing but net. He delivers, baby. Flexes as well as it goes down. Trifecta. He's been a machine today. 29 by Jermaine Kuznard as Oregon has a 14-point advantage. South Carolina driving inside a pay up over Dante and couldn't convert, but Mack got fouled. So BJ Mack will shoot two at the free throw line. Mack with two shots here. Oregon is just notorious for first round upsets as the lower seed. They beat Luca Garza three years ago. Matched up against Iowa in the 7 versus 2 game. They didn't even play a first round matchup. They got passed on to the second round because VCU didn't field a team. Had to cancel due to COVID. So Oregon was VCU's opponent. Just got sent to the round of 32 without playing VCU. As VCU had a forfeit. And then Oregon and a track meet upset Iowa with Luca Garza in the second round. Uh, Luca Garza's national player of the year season. Down low off to Dante. Dante goes up in the low post and gets fouled. Two more free throws coming up here for the Ducks. Yeah, I remember I covered that game with John three years ago. That was insane. That uh, Oregon-Iowa game from 2021. Yeah, that should be a really good game. Two absolute terrific big men. Ryan uh, Ryan Kalkbrenner for Creighton going up against Enfali Dante for Oregon. If uh, they're able to outstand South Carolina for the final nine and a half minutes. Dante has three fouls. Evans Jr. and Tracy with three as well. 
And uh, South Carolina in a little bit of foul trouble themselves. BJ Mack just picked up his fourth. So he's got four personal falls for BJ Mack right now in this game. Dante missed the first one. Second one's good. Thirteen point lead for Oregon under nine and a half left to go. South Carolina with the ball right. Lobs it over to Davis at the elbow. Davis dribbles back out to the perimeter. Top of the key, Michi Johnson. Johnson dribbles down the hill to the rim. Johnson, that's a tough drive, and he scores around the rim. Good for two. It's a strong bucket right there. Nevertheless, I mean they're building up something special with this program. What a what a turnaround for South Carolina. Year one under Lamont Paris, eleven and twenty one. Year two. 26 and 7, tied for the most wins in program history. Spin cycle. A nice dump off down low right there. Leads to the two handed flush by Dante. Kwame Evans off the spin move. What a way to play make for Dante with a dunk. 20 points by N. Folly Dante. 840 remaining in action as Oregon has a 13 point lead. Corner three in the air. Looking to put it within 10. They missed it for South Carolina in a Gamecocks tip it out of bounds off of Benjamin Bosman's for knock. This was a nasty pass. He drew a double team of Kwame Evans. He's only a freshman, a top 15 recruit. Five star. He play makes over for Dante. They get a couple five star first year guys in this team. Shellstead, top 25. Freshman, Kwame Evans, top 15 freshman. And Mookie Cook off the bench, top 20, top 30 freshman as well. Lob down low, Dante underneath. Dante goes up, and Dante will head back to the free to line, gets followed. Just a matchup nightmare in this game for N. Folly Dante. Yup, Zion against Taco back in uh, 2019. Unbelievable. I streamed that game. Um, Central Florida had a chance to win on the putback, and he missed the putback. That was an unbelievable game. Dante is 20. Kuznard is 29. They've combined for 49 points out of the 65. Make it 50 with a first made free throw by Dante. If you're new on the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, or ring that notification bell if you'd like to be notified for future live streams I cover. I'll also be back covering McNeese State versus Gonzaga later tonight at 7.15 p.m. The second free throw is good by Dante. This Oregon team right now is looking like a machine. Dante will check out towards the bench. Michi Johnson now with three fouls, scoring 13 points for South Carolina. South Carolina has an inside a key, a leading forward off the glass. They couldn't make it from point blank range, missing the mark by Michi Johnson. They got it back as Oregon turned it over. Be Benjamin Bosmans Verdonka transfer from Illinois on the floor now for the Gamecocks. Johnson jumper, 15 footer, got the bounce over Rigsby for two. It's just been basically. Shot for shot, these two teams have matched up against each other in the second half, but either way, Oregon just keeps on extending the lead. Shellstead at the left wing perimeter. Born in Westland, Oregon. Same hometown as Peyton Pritchard, who played for Oregon as well. Oregon looking for some redemption. They were either a one or a two seed in the COVID year that got canceled with Peyton Pritchard carrying that team that year, averaging 20 points per game. Missed three at the wing for Oregon, South Carolina at a step back here, top of the key, no good. It got kicked all the way to the backcourt. South Carolina picks it up with seven minutes left to go. Out to the baseline, Zachary Davis, his pass to the corner, broken up out of bounds, last touch by Oregon. It will take the media timeout here. 6.58 left to go, the Ducks. Seven straight first round victories in a row under head coach Dana Altman looking to make it number eight. And right now they are on their way. 67-54 with under seven minutes left to play as we'll head to the timeouts. Chris in the stream, welcome back in. Thanks for joining in, man. And the Folly Dante and Jermaine Kuznard combining for 51 out of the 67 today for Oregon. Nevada and Dayton about to begin the second half. Right now, Nevada leads 34-25 against Dayton. I'll be back for my final stream later tonight covering McNeese State versus Gonzaga at 7.15, so feel free to join in if you'd like to be back for that game. Um, tomorrow, just one stream. I'll be out during the afternoon. Afternoon, I got a couple games in person that I'm announcing tomorrow, but I plan on being back covering Charleston against Alabama for that track meet um, and a track type of match right there for basketball. 
the 13 versus 4 matchup, Charleston versus Alabama tomorrow night at 735. That's going to be the first to 100. We'll probably win that game tomorrow. Oregon is catching lightning in a bottle right now for them. Going to make it five straight in a row if they're able to pull this one out. It's just they completely took South Carolina out of a rhythm in this game. South Carolina likes to slow down the game and control the pace through their defense. And they just haven't been able to have that ever um, in this game today. They hit a buzzer beater three to pull one and five going into halftime. It's 34 to 29 going into half. But in the second half, Oregon has exploded. And uh, they have completely been able to just shoot the ball lights out. 59.5% for Oregon. Six for 15 from three. Just lights out today shooting. South Carolina's really crushed their opportunities today at the free to line. Um, 10 for 16, just 62.5% today at the free to line for South Carolina. Yeah, wow, both of those epic. Uh, I'll probably say Jenkins right there because it was uh, for the championship for Villanova. So I'll go Jenkins there. That was uh, quite the moment. Jalen Suggs on the scores table after he banked the three, pulling up his uniform. But that was a Final Four game, nothing bigger than a national championship game. If uh, if that happened in the national championship, then I would go Jalen Suggs there. But that was a Final Four game. Hey, remember this. It's not about how you start, Jeffrey. It's about how you finish. So, um, there, there's still a bunch more games to be determined, so, uh, you might be able to start to get on a run and get, like, a bunch of games. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that, JT. Man, sorry to hear that. Yeah, Dana Altman is basically, like, another Tom Izzo in the sport of college basketball when it comes down to March Madness. Dana Altman's won seven straight first-round games, and, um, Tom Izzo today with a win. I think that was number six for Michigan State. But uh, just this Oregon team, just they always catch fire in March for some reason. 13-point lead for Oregon. South Carolina makes the three, though, back from the timeouts. It's only a 10-point game. And JT still in an opportunity. That's a big three right there by Talon Cooper to cut it winning 10. Going to need a bunch more threes. They're 10 for 17 shooting this half. Oregon's 11 for 19. And 5 for 7 from 3 for South Carolina in the second half. Dante draws a double team outside. Kuznard catching fire. Oh, he hits it. Jermaine Kuznard, 30-plus burger on the board against his former team right now. He's got 32 on 13 for 20 shooting. He's 5 for 9 from 3-point range for Kuznard. Just incredible what he's done today for Oregon in this one been two guys that's carried the score and Kuznard and Dante combining for 54 out of the 70 points South Carolina has it down low lob underneath and no got rejected there from behind Dante and Kwame Evans Jr. playing tough defense denying the Gamecocks inside a low post Oregon slows down tempo under six minutes left to go the Ducks at the right wing Lob goes down to the low block here. Kuznard. Kuznard with 32. Uh, looking for more. Kuznard got it blocked by Mack. Mack comes up with a basketball. And Kuznard picks up the loose ball foul. So this is going to go in South Carolina's direction. 535 left. Five fouls committed by Oregon. South Carolina actually is seven in the second half. So next time around, Oregon's in the bonus. Yeah, this is kind of shocking for South Carolina here that they haven't been more competitive because they faced offenses that's much better, in my opinion, than Oregon facing teams like Alabama and Kentucky that just blow up and down the floor against you. But this Oregon team's got some really good uh, shot-making abilities for them. I, I don't know how they, how they ranked 115 in the nation in scoring. They should be top 40 in the nation in points per game this season. South Carolina just scored down low. Dante... Picked up the dribble, and South Carolina picks up a loose ball foul. As Kuznard got knocked down by Johnson, so Michi Johnson picks up the foul. And this will send 
Kuznar to the free to line shooting in the one and one bonus. Five oh three left to go. Fourth follow of the game picked up by Michi Johnson for South Carolina. By the way, Dayton has failed to make any sort of adjustments. Nevada was trailing by five, and now Nevada leads by thirteen. 42 to 29, the score with 16 minutes left. Nevada is leading over Dayton. The Mountain West out to prove themselves in this tournament. First free throw is good by Kuznard. Just an incredible game by him today. Going up against his former team, 33 points on 13 for 21 shooting, 5 for 9 from three point range. Second free throw is good. 34 now by Kuznard. Five minutes left to go. Already one 11 seed is taken down a 6 today with Duquesne. Oregon under 5 minutes remaining from being the second 11 seed to move on in the tournament. Inside getting to the rim with a head full of steam. Layups made by Talon Cooper for South Carolina. 11 point lead. Shellstead going to slow down tempo here for Oregon. Shellstead crosses the midcourt logo. Puts the ball into the hands to Kuznard. Kuznard hands it off to Tracy. 15 on the shot clock. Shellstead. Shellstead's been silent. He's got seven. He made the opening three. Only four after that. A nice skip pass. Kuznard over to the cutting. Kwame Evans Jr. who throws it down with a two-handed flush. Some really good playmaking abilities by this Oregon squad today. 34 points alongside six assists by Kuznard. Kwame Evans Jr. works his way up to six points now today. That's just a beautiful backdoor cut by Kwame Evans with an incredible no-look pass off the shovel by Kuznar there. And then on the other side, the block that went off the glass by Oregon. They get some guys that can fly. Athletics dudes in this team. It's, it's incredible what they've done. They have just eight scholarship players available on the roster for Oregon. It, it wasn't a clean block, though, so South Carolina will head to the free throw line here. And the first free throw is no good. Oh, man. This has just been a difficult game for South Carolina at the free throw line. Michi Johnson missed the first one. Kwame Evans Jr. up to four fouls in this game. Mack and Johnson both with four for South Carolina. Second free throw is good. 12-point lead. Just above four minutes left to go for Oregon. Shellstead crosses the timeline. Tracy lobs it down to the low block. Evans, Kwabi Evans off the turnaround inside, gets bumped into and fouled. And that's on uh, number 10, Miles Stute for South Carolina. Yeah, this is, I, I thought it'd be much more competitive than this. I had Oregon winning this game, but I thought it would be winning single digits in uh, more of a defensive type of game here. South Carolina's led by their defense this year. Their defense did not show up at all in today's game. If Oregon wasn't turning the, the ball over often early on, then Oregon will be up by like 25-30 right now against this team. Oregon is 60% shooting from the floor. They're 27 for 45. They're 7 for 16 from 3. They're shooting 44% from 3. For South Carolina, their defense didn't show up. Plus, they haven't been a strong offense all season long. 44% uh, shooting from the floor. They're, they're almost a better field goal shooting percentage than they are at the free to line. Or uh, or at one point they were at the free to line. They're up to 61% now, but they were, I think they were like 45% at one point in the game at the free to line. They're 11 for 18 now on free throws. If you're new on the stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe, ring that notification bell as well if you like to be notified for future live streams they cover here um, on the channel. As we go into the timeouts, 3.56 remaining in this game. A quick update for you guys since we go into the timeout here. Uh, recently, at the start of the new year in 2024, I switched over to YouTube TV so I could access uh, and cover these types of games for you guys here on the channel. Also be able to access uh, different streams from my NBA coverage too for uh, Boston Celtic streams too. But if you're interested in saving $45 in your first three months of YouTube TV, feel free to check out my offer I have for you at the bottom right corner of the screen. All you have to do is scan the QR code or you can click my YouTube TV refer a friend link in the description of this video. I pinned it to the chat. So if anybody's interested, feel free 
to uh, be a new, subscri new subscriber over to YouTube TV. It's $45 that you would save in your first three months. It's $15 off for signing up with my YouTube TV for a friend link. Plus, you get $10 off each of your first three months of YouTube TV. All you have to do is scan that QR code or click the link pinned in the chat posted in the description of this video youtube tv gets you a 4 cam channel view to view four ncaa tournament games all at once for the march madness tournament it's pretty cool what they have it's available in the united states only no contract or hidden fees you can cancel any time a limited time offer over on my youtube tv or refer a friend link you can save 45 dollars within your first three months for new subscribers 12 point lead Winner of this game takes on Creighton on Saturday. Looking like Oregon. As we're under four minutes left. We'll do that. Ah, behind the arc fans get Texas A&M. Yeah, I'm, th this might be a very difficult tournament for SEC teams, in my honest opinion. Mississippi State was a no-show this afternoon against Michigan State. South Carolina having a tough game here. Um, Kentucky takes on Oakland later today. Texas A&M will take on Nebraska in the brackets. Auburn takes on Yale. Yeah, this might be a very difficult tournament for SEC teams. First one is good. Oregon shooting two free throws. First one is made by Kwame Evans Jr. Second shot here with 356 left. Second one goes down. 14 point advantage. For Oregon. Other four left to play. South Carolina at the low block. Michi Johnson moves it outside to BJ Mack. Top of the key. They'll dribble up forward. Inside the key. Bobbling it was right. But got it back out to the perimeter. Quarter three misfired. Offensive rebound back to Miles Stute. At the corner right. Right doing a lot of dribbling. 15 on the shot clock. Moves it out to the top. Mack with a three. And knocks it down. 11 point game now. Yeah, they were red hot that year. They they were on the bubble the whole year. They won the Pac-12 Tournament Championship in 2019. Basically, this is like a similar identical record almost to what they had in uh, 2019 where they got red hot late stretch of the season. Floater down low by Kuznard, and Kuznard gets bumped into and fouled. And Oregon now will head to the double bonus. So Jermaine Kuznard will shoot two at the free throw line. Double bonus time. Kuznard a walking bucket in today's game. First free throw. Right down the middle. 34 points by Jermaine Kuznard against this former team. This Oregon team looking to be a tough out in the brackets. Second free throw. That's good. 78-65, 36 by Kuznard, perfect 5 for 5 of the charity stripe. Three minutes left to play. South Carolina jacks up the corner, three bricked off the back room, no good. Kuznard saves it right over to Shellstead, gets the basketball. And Oregon has this game well in check right now. An incredible game by Dana Altman squad. 2.45 left, 13 point lead. Kuznard, floater inside, Dante able to snag it, it was a little bit away from the rim, Dante went up and couldn't convert, goes back to South Carolina, up the floor, deflected pass, intercepted into the hands of J.D. and Tracy, and Oregon will slow it down, they eliminated Luca Garza three years ago in the second round of the NCAA tournament in an upset being the seventh seed in a track meet match. Today, about to upset the sixth seed. This will be the second 11 seed to win on opening day. Duquesne winning earlier today against BYU. And Oregon will burn a timeout as we're down to 209 left to go. What a game by the Ducks here, exploding for 59% shooting from the floor. An incredible game by Oregon. Two guys really carry the load. Jermaine Kuznar, just a massive performance. 36 points by Kuznar today. They got some redemption to do in this tournament. 2020, they were one of the top teams in the nation, led by Peyton Pritchard. And the tournament was canceled. 
in 2020. They were projected as either a one or a two seed in 2020. Low key, they are a team that can make a run considering teams lately that have got their redemption and made deep runs into the bracket. San Diego State back in 2020 was projected as a one seed. They made their run to the Final Four last year. Baylor and Kansas were projected one seeds in 2020. They won national championships coming out of COVID in 2021 for Baylor, 2022 for Kansas. Last year, San Diego State made their run to the Final Four. This Oregon team looking for that type of redemption four years later in 2024 for them. And yeah. I would not be shocked if they upset Creighton. Dana Altman just always gets the best out of his team in March. This man knows how to coach. 78-65, just above two minutes left to go. 58 combined points between Jermaine Kuznard and Enfali Dante. Kuznard with 36, Dante's got 22. Inbound. Dante put it up before we have a South Carolina foul with 2.06 left. And they're in a double bonus for Oregon. So Dante will head to the free throw line, shoot two, and a double bonus. I mean, th this is incredible what Oregon did today. They got a game all the way across the other side of the U.S. This game is being played at Pittsburgh. They took a flight all the way across to the opposite side of the U.S. and is about to win by double digits. B.J. Mack has just fallen out. I think I'm more concerned about these SEC schools. I think you get a lot of them being bounced out in the first round. And honestly, it didn't take many SEC teams far besides Auburn to the Sweet 16. First one is no good. Just disappointing way to close it out for South Carolina, but... Uh, for South Carolina fans, this team, 26 wins, tied for most in program history. I mean, nothing to be ashamed of. They get a tough draw on the bracket with Oregon. Uh, yes, Hunter Dickinson is supposed to play. Kevin McCuller is out. South Carolina floats up the runner. They get it. Knocked down, plus the foul. Yeah, this is a bad matchup going against an Oregon team that's red hot for them. They get put in a bad draw for them. Yeah, I got Sanford, too, in my bracket to upset Kansas. I took Texas in my bracket there. I wasn't really high on Colorado yesterday. They played a bad game. They played down to Boise State. They're lucky that they won it. They got so much talent on that Colorado team that they shouldn't have made it that close against Boise State. Boise State choked that game late. They had some bad coaching in that game. Eric in the street, welcome in. Going for Oakland to upset Kentucky. Yeah, these SEC schools might com pull a complete dud. Uh, I think the furthest I have is Auburn to the to the Sweet 16. I got Alabama out in the second round against Grand Canyon. Um, Texas a and is going to lose against Nebraska for my prediction. It, it, it's looking pretty bleak for SEC schools right now. Going down to 0-2 and non-competitive games being the higher seed. This is going to be reviewed on the floor. Bodies were colliding left and right. We're down to 148 left. What's good? Basketball hoops in the stream. Um, Natron on the channel. Eric, welcome in. If you guys are new in the channel, make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Ring that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be new for future live streams, I'll be back later tonight covering McNeese State versus Gonzaga at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time. So feel free to join in. Um, tomorrow, I'll have just one stream. I'm out during the day. Tomorrow, my games got pushed up that I'm announcing in person tomorrow. So I'll be back tomorrow for one game covering Alabama versus Charleston at 735. Yeah, Western Kentucky versus Marquette. I think it all depends on how Tyler Kolick comes out in that game. And if he's not like game ready and missing shots, I Western Kentucky might have a chance right there uh, for you behind the arc fan. Honestly, anything could happen. Nevada leads Dayton right now, 46 to 35 with 11 minutes left to go. And we're down to 148 remaining here. Yeah. 
Yeah, Auburn got a very difficult draw if they face UConn in the Sweet 16. They are such a deep team, though. They're, I'm, I'm really, I, I really like that Auburn squad, but these other SEC schools, I'm, I'm worried about them in this bracket. Especially Texas A&M. I think Texas A&M is a one and done for them. Got to lose against Nebraska. Um, they, they've been all over the place this year. Super inconsistent for Texas A&M. And they're one of those teams that's similar to Mississippi State and South Carolina. That they're just not efficient. They're all about offensive rebounds for Texas A&M. And if Nebraska is able to get the initial defensive rebound. And just slow down tempo and drill threes. Then... It's going to be a tough game for Texas A&M. They, they usually just face plant in the bracket. Last year, they were a, they, they were a big no-show against Penn State. They, they, had a game, they had a game on West Coast time over against Penn State, and they, they did not show up for that game. It was like a 10.30 tip-off time, and Penn State blew the doors off Texas A&M last year. Yep, I got James Madison over Wisconsin. So, this will be an Oregon inbounds. Adam on the stream, welcome in. Thanks for joining in, man. Inbound goes to Kuznard. He's been incredible in this game against his former team. Kuznard, 36 points. Minute 40 left to go. Now to the wing, back into the hands to Kuznard. Down to six in the shot clock. He dribbles up, drives, floats to the runner. Got it to go. He's got 38 for Jermaine Kuznard. 81 to 68, Oregon. Just elite level shot making for the Ducks. If you guys are new in this stream, make sure to smash the thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Be sure to join me back in at 7.15 p.m. I'll be covering Gonzaga versus McNeese State. South Carolina couldn't finish one from two feet away at the rim from point-blank range. Off the glass too strong, it goes back to Oregon, and the Gamecocks commit a foul. 107 left to go. And Jackson Shellstead will shoot two in a double bonus. Standing ovation. For the fans here for Oregon. They took a flight all the way across the country. To play a game in Pittsburgh. And they are a minute remaining. From making it. Eight straight first round of victories. For Dana Altman. At Oregon in the opening rounds. Um, if you guys didn't know. My name is Sal by the way. Both of the free throws are good. Uh, my college team is Providence. Unfortunately they did not make it in. Should have. Uh, I thought they'd have a good chance to make it in, but neither did St. John's and St. Ed Hall. They got snubbed as Virginia got the final spot in the bracket by uh, NBA team that I root for is the Celtics. Three-point make by South Carolina. Oregon in the backcourt got the inbound this time with 55 seconds. South Carolina gave a foul, so this will send the Ducks back to the free to line in the double bonus. Hey, thanks so much, Jeffrey. Really appreciate it, man. 55 seconds left to go. The last player with 38-plus points in a win by a double-digit seed. Guess who? Steph Curry. 38 points plus in 2008 for Davison. Jermaine Kuznard has 38 tonight in the final minute. First free throw is good by Shellstead. Shellstead board in Westland, Oregon. Same place as Peyton Pritchard. Both of the free throws are good. 85 to 71. This is a very dangerous team in the bracket. Catching lightning in a bottle. Going to make it five straight victories for Oregon. And it's their first win out of the five that they've won by double digit points. If they're able to win this one by double digits. Layup's good by South Carolina. Oregon getting pressure to backcourt. Shellstead, 38 seconds. They'll burn a timeout here with 38.6. So timeout taken by the Ducks down to one timeout left. South Carolina with two. Make sure to join back in for McNeese State versus Gonzaga. I'll be back later tonight for that one. 7.15 p.m. That's my final stream for later uh, tonight. Um, tomorrow, I'm, I'm away during the afternoon. I'm covering a couple games in person that I cover announcing for Stonehill tomorrow for Division One, but I plan on being back after those games at 7.35 to cover Alabama versus Charleston. Vegas, great bracket there for him. His bracket's still perfect. Wow, great job there, man. Uh, Joey in the street, welcome in. 
yeah, make sure to tune in for some Celtics streams. I'll be off for the next couple Celtics games because I want to do the March Madness coverage, but I'll probably be back sometime next week for my next Celtics stream. Not sure just when. Here we go. 38.6 seconds left to go. We still have the entire um, month of April for playoffs plus May and then June. But uh, should be a bunch more Celtic streams after the conclusion of March Madness because uh, they're looking for Banner 18 this year. South Carolina gives a foul. Well, 37.8 seconds left to go. And Oregon will head to the free to line and the double bonus. 85 points against the South Carolina defense that allowed 67. Coming into this game in Oregon is... If they make this free throw, they're going to score 20 points over the average of South Carolina. By the way, Nevada is blowing the doors off Dayton right now. 56-39 to with under 8 minutes left. Second free throw by Oregon. It is good. Right down the middle. That is Jermaine Kuznard who makes both of the free throws. He has got 40 in the game. He is the first player to drop down 40 for a double-digit seed since Steph Curry. Back in 2008 for Davidson, Oregon gets the ball off the deflection. They're not going to run up the score here. And Oregon, great sportsmanship, will just dribble out the clock. They could have dunked it down, but they were aware what the score is. And they will advance on to the next round. The Oregon Ducks, led by head coach Dana Altman. The five straight victories in a row for Oregon. They always... Pick up a win in the first round of the bracket. It's the eighth straight time that Dana Altman has led his team to the NCAA tournament at Oregon. And they are perfect in first round games. Under Altman in program history, 8-0 and in first round games. Under head coach Dana Altman, Oregon wins. 87-73, to the final score over South Carolina. Both 11 seeds have won the games today in the tournament. And Oregon will move on and take on Creighton. In a round of 32 on Saturday. Thanks all for joining in. Be a part of the stream before I do sign off for this one. Make sure to smash the thumbs up. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Ring that notification bell. And I will be back covering McNeese State versus Gonzaga in a round an hour from now. That should be an incredible matchup. So make sure to be back here on the channel. We're going to wrap up. But uh, you guys, the legends here in the stream, keep on coming back for future live streams. So we'll be back later tonight for the final stream. Gonzaga versus McNeese State. Make sure to join back and we'll close out to the channel members. All channel members get a shout out at the end of each and every single one of my live streams. We got Jason Warren, Rajeep, I am Ghost, Russell, John, Mark, Kelly, Jeffrey, Vegas, Oink, Oink, Michael, Katie, Bradley, Daniel, Derek, Sister, Surround, Mario, Guido, SG Sports Talk, Ice Ice Baby, Robin, and Melinda. Jermaine Kuznar drops down 40 points. Him and Enfali Dante combined for 63 out of the 87. 23 by Dante today on 7 for 9 shooting. Kuznar drops down 40 on 14 for 22 from the floor and 5 made threes. Oregon wins by 14 over South Carolina. 87-73 to 73 the final score. Both the 11 seeds have won. I'll be back later tonight for Gonzaga versus McNeese State. Thanks so much all for joining in. And I'll see you guys back tonight. If you'd like to come on back, enjoy the rest of your Thursday.